Good morning. Today we're going to look at uh, the Waterloo CCC problem J1 next in line, which is from 2013. This problem is a problem that's checking to see if you understand how to do basic assignment statements and perform some mathematical operations. The problem description is, you know a family with three children, their ages from form and arithmetic sequence. The difference in ages between the middle child and the youngest child is the same as the difference in ages between the oldest child and the middle child. For example, their ages could be 5, 10, and 15, since both adjacent pairs have a difference of 5 years. Given the ages of the youngest and middle children, what is the age of the oldest child? And then we always have our input specifications. So the input consists of two integers, each on a separate line. The first line is the age y of the youngest child. And we see it tells us that y is 0 is less than or equal than y, which is less than or equal to 50. And the second line is the age m of the middle child. And the restrictions are y is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to 50. So what this input specification tells us is that we're taking two integer values. And that m is always going to be larger than y. And both of the values will be less than 50. Um, and this is important because it means I don't have to error check. And our output will be the age of the oldest child. So, for example, I have 12 and 15. 12 is the youngest. 15 is the middle. And we know the difference between 12 and 15 is 3. So we add 3 to 15 to get 18. There's the age of the oldest child. Notice if the youngest is 10 and the middle is 10, the difference between 10 and 10 is 0. So the oldest child is 10 because 10 plus 0 is 0. So we come back into our problem here. Step 1 is we take our inputs. And now I like to, when I'm doing these contest problems, is I always like just to assign them values so I don't have to type them in over and over when I'm testing. So we see 12 and 15 are the two values. So 12, middle is equal to 15. Step two is we find the difference between youngest and middle. And so we say difference is equal to the middle age minus the youngest age. So in this case, what's going to end up happening is we're going to say 15 minus 12, which is equal to 3. And now step three is find oldest by adding the difference to the middle age. So we say oldest is equal to the middle plus the difference. And then step four is we always print out result. Because in this contest, that's how they check if you have the right answer, is they actually just check your console printing. So I'm just going to print out the oldest. Not zero, the oldest. There we go. So if I save this now, and run it. So please look, there it is, 2013 J1. So I'm going to say Python 3 CCC 2013 J1.py, and there's our age of 18. And I can take it and change these inputs to 10 and 10. So let's change this to 10 and change that to 10. And we're going to save this now, and we'll give this another run. There's our age of 10. Okay, last thing I want to do is I want to set this up as inputs. So there are my inputs. So I'm going to take my inputs. But what I have to remember is that when I take inputs using Python is that they are strings. So if I save this now and try and run it, I'm going to get an error if I put 10 and 10. And the reason I'm getting an error is because the inputs are taken as 10 as a string. And because I can't actually then perform that mathematical operation. So what I have to do is cast it to an integer. And casting is the process of changing type. And that has to do with how the variable is stored in memory. Um, the way you store the string 10, and I'm doing quotes here, you can't see me doing it, and the integer 10 are different. And that's why you need to actually say, this is an integer, and then you can do the mathematical operations with it. So if I save this now and run it, 10, 10. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, I didn't cast the right one. Look at that. Who caught me on that? There we go, 10 and 10, okay? Now, let's just do one last thing. I would totally just submit the problem like this, be done. But one thing I do recommend, and I get students that are learning to program in the habit of doing, is I always like to define these as a function. And the reason why I like to define them as a function is because as you get into more complicated problems, this becomes useful um, for a variety of reasons. Also, it familiarizes ourselves with a function. So a function is a small segment of code that we can call upon at any time. So when I load this problem now, it's going to run exactly the same. Oh, pardon me. I don't want to go there. Here. Um, I'm going to hit run, and it's going to read all this and not run it. 
but only when it sees the call of the function problem that says, oh, I have to run this, and it's going to jump up here and execute it. So if I come in here and run this now, notice it does the exact same thing. So 15, 18, and then I get 21. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.